This is the state of New Jersey versus Anthony Jones, indictment 1861009. Good morning, Your Honor. Assistant Prosecutor Christine DeLeon on behalf of the state. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. May it please the court, uh, Joe Masrani on behalf of uh, Mr. Jones, Judge. Good morning. And for the record, Mr. Jones is present. And you have the pre-sentence report. I do, Judge. Any additions, changes, or deletions? Uh, no, but there are some concerning things in here that I don't know why they're in here. Um, so I'll, I'll address them as part of the sentencing. Okay, and, and I believe there was also a supplement. Did you receive that? Yes, Judge. In fact, I looked at it yesterday. Here. Was, uh, I, have, I might have it in chambers. Um, I know it had, was a, a letter from the, uh, the victim in the case that I understand um, Billy is going to read into the record. Yes, there was also a, a stack of medical bills totaling about $59,000. Uh, so I'll hear you as to sentencing. So, Judge, uh, when we entered, when we all entered into this plea agreement, there was some kind of certain uh, understandings based on handshakes between us uh, and the state. Specifically, if, if everybody's able to come up with the lump sum at one time, that it would be a fines only type um, situation. And I see in the pre sentence report, you know, it says non custodial probation, defendant to argue for no probation subject to payment in full 3,000 restitution for sentencing. It's a little, it's a little, you know, different than kind of what we, we talked about. And the other thing, obviously, at issue is that we're going to be arguing about is the, uh, the civil reservation issue. Um, those, yeah, those, those are really the, the only issues here, Judge. I mean, this, this particular case, it's very unfortunate, especially, especially for Mr. Jones, because obviously at the time he was employed as a, as a police officer in New Brunswick. He was just starting out his career. He had been on the force for only a couple of years. Uh, and, and uh, it, you know, I'm sure the court has, has um, read and, and looked at brain development in, in young adults and, 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 and people. And at the time that this happened, he was still in his early 20s, Judge. And it is, there's research to the, today that the brain doesn't really fully develop in, in men until about 26 or 27 years old. Um, so at the time, although he's an adult by legal standards, he's still at a bar drinking with, a fr with his friends. And although he should be more responsible as a police officer, he recognizes that instead of, you know, stepping away from the fight that started between the, the victim in this particular case and other individuals at the bar, he, 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 he went. Um, this ultimately, Judge, uh, was uh, a bar fight that lasted a matter of seconds. It was a stupid lapse in judgment on my client's behalf uh, that basically cost him uh, his career because it's highly, highly unlikely that anybody in, in, in the public domain is going to, to hire him given this, even though he's not forfeiting all uh, public employment, he's just forfeiting his job with New Brunswick. So, and, and, and knowing Mr. Jones and speaking to his father and knowing his father very well and, and living with this case for, a, you know, almost a year, all he wants to do is be a police officer. Uh, and he's not going to be able to do that. And some people, um, you know, from the, the, the time they're very young, they know what they want to do and they make mistakes sometimes and they are not able to do them. So he's got, he has to live with that. I'm not trying to minimize what happened here. But in the grand scheme of things, Judge, um, it is fortunate uh, that nobody got really hurt, although the victim is claiming that he has some debilitating uh, injuries that he's obviously trying to recover on, which, deal, which, which now brings me to the issue of the civil reservation and the request for civil reservation. Um, this is, you know, the other half of my firm does personal injury work. And a dram shop case is really one of the most valuable cases you can ever put your hands on because you're really not going after uh, the people involved. That although you have to name everybody, they're going after the bar where people were drinking and they're going to allege that the security guards didn't do enough to do this and didn't do that. to this civil talk because it has nothing to do with, with this case, this plea, the criminal act. Uh, well, it, 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 it has to do with the with the issue of the civil <coughs> reservation, and, and you know, there's notice was given that he was going to be requesting. In fact, 
I have notes that reflect that the uh, the issue of the civil reservation would be raised at sentencing, and the state would not be taking a position on that issue. That's what my notes. That that's what the understanding was, Judge. Right. So, uh, nevertheless, but I think I should. Deep pockets. I know. I did personal injury work. Right. So, and, and if you look at the, and we address this in our letter, if you look at the. The doctors and the and, and the pain management doctors and the chiropractors that the that the young man's going to. It's it, we do this work. I mean, we we this is right. But doesn't doesn't that argument kind of take away from your client's argument that it would be a financial hardship to him if the deep it, pockets it, are going to be the ones that pay this? Well, it's it's not. He's named in the lawsuit. Obviously, they're going to go after the deepest pockets, but the deepest pockets can also come after my client for indemnification and and, and other acts, Judge. He, he's named in the lawsuit, and he's and, and the and the victim does not need this guilty plea in order to make his case in the civil case, and that's really where I think a civil reservation is is necessary. In this particular case, my client obviously lost his career. He doesn't have the the, the wherewithal and, and and the financial backing to 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 to, to fight this. Uh, 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 civil suit, He's, it's probably going to put him deep in the hole, Judge. And if if the if the, the victim ultimately will likely get a judgment because there is a video of this uh, this fight, which is going to even put him deeper in the hole. It's, it's not necessary for for this guilty plea to be used in that case. And I think it would be uh, just for the court to enter a civil reservation and allow the civil case to proceed on its own merit, which. I, I would have to say it has it has merit, um, and so that's you know he's agreed to pay three thousand dollars in restitution. He has a check today. He's ready to write it to whomever he needs to write it to. Um, it, it, that was part of the agreement that he that everything would be paid off today. That's he's ready to do that. I thought that was going to be done in advance of today. And that's why we put the date off for so long, so that everybody would have time to get it. Yeah, he's, he's had it all the time. He's had it the whole time. He's just, he didn't, you know, we don't know who to write it to. I don't know who Judge, it he writes it to the victim. In fact, I've had other attorneys contact me and say, do I write it to the victim? Yes. So well, he's, yeah. I mean, he's, There's he's, the answer he's, to your question. Okay, well. The victim's name is in the paperwork. I can get so it So we'll, we'll, we'll just write it and give it to you? Yeah. And, and then, then I will and then you'll forward it to transport him. it to him, yeah. That's fine. Great. Uh, we have it here. Uh, he's also will like very likely go downstairs and probably pay all the fines with, with uh, for for the simple assault, and uh, hopefully he'll go on his way and uh, he'll pretty sure you'll never see him again. Uh, I do want to say that after right after this incident, he attended uh, uh, rehab in Florida for several months. He was at a at a, at a program in Florida uh, dealing with obviously you know alcohol issues and, and drinking and being responsible when you drink. So he did that. Um, this is a negotiated plea agreement, Judge. I'm asking that the court obviously go along with it, not impose uh, uh, probation because he's he's kept up his end of the bargain. And I'm asking the court to enter a civil reservation in accordance with uh, the letter uh, that we we submitted, Judge. Okay. Thank you, Judge. This wasn't a bar fight um, between the victim and the defendant. This was. The victim, as you saw in the video, was dancing with a girl. These individuals didn't like that. One hits off his hat. Um, another one bumps up against him. Um, this one, Mr. Anthony Jones, grabs him from behind and bear hugs so he can't even defend himself. Um, when he finally gets out, he, he spins around to the person who hit his hat off, and other people start punching him. There was five on one. This young man had moved here within the last year. He had been fixing up a home. He had been working hard, two jobs. He went out that night to make friends. This is the saddest case. And he was dancing with a girl, and he was probably excited. Somebody's talking to him. He doesn't know anybody in town. And then he gets jumped by five people. It's not a bar fight. It's a riot. It's, it's a dog pile on a rabbit is what this is. Um, when we did the plea, I wanted to flesh out the factual basis to make sure everyone took responsibility, full responsibility for their actions because everyone seemed to be minimizing, and Your Honor stopped me from asking additional questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I have had the opportunity to read the um, information from the victim as to what he's suffered. Right. No, I understand that, <laughs> Judge, but I'm just saying... Now, we have a situation where, and I'm not pay taking a position on the civil reservation, I said I wouldn't, um, 
but the victim wasn't consulted because that was something we thought we had a plea deal worked out and at the last minute Mr. Masrani said well he'll do it the plea but you know I really don't think what about the civil reservation will you agree to it I said I can't agree to that but I won't take a position on it um, but that doesn't mean the victim might have something to say to it and I'll read that in a second um, I think it's important when you're talking about a criminal matter that people do take full responsibility for their actions and that they admit truthfully what they're doing they don't try to put the blame on the victim or other people um, and I feel as if that's not fully really happening here and if you don't have that happen you can't get full deterrence um, I don't think he, you know uh, that he should not be on probation just because he pays his three thousand dollars there was no handshake deal I don't know what Mr. Masrani is talking about I put everything in the plea papers that we talked about um, this is a man who went from a second degree uh, aggravated assault down to a D pace for all of that. They should be put on some type of probation. This was serious. And this man suffered serious injuries, as Your Honor can see from the letter, which I'll read in a second. Um, there is a need to deter. Factor non applies. Because they have no records, I don't think I can say there's a risk that they'll commit another offense, except for the fact that maybe there is because they don't seem to be phased by their own conduct or taking full responsibility. Um, so I'm going to be giving up his career, he's not taking responsibility. Well, Judge, you can't have a police officer who commits an assault, I'm sneaks not, out I'm of the bar, that and that's still work as a police officer. I'm just saying that's that's acknowledging the right. But he can't, he has a DP on his record, which is probably going to be expunged soon. He can get a job in plenty of other places. He just shouldn't work in law enforcement. He can get a job making money. Um, he wa he doesn't have an indictable conviction. And part of this was worked out because they said, well, we don't want an indictable conviction. So now they're trying to get a second bite of the apple and say, well, now he has a DP, but, you know, he, he, you know this affects it. It doesn't, uh, it's not a hardship on his uh, potential career as, as other things besides law enforcement. And I'm going to read to you, Your Honor, um, Mr. Chkowski is uh, the victim's impact statement. I want to update you with what has changed since being injured on 121.18. I've been getting medical attention with minimal relief and I've been in constant pain. I moved here to New Jersey for my full-time job. Since being injured, I've been worried about my employment because of the pain I'm in and I've spent lots of time going to doctor's appointments. I'm seeing a surgeon now after getting no relief from neck in injections that were epidural injections. Before this happened on 121.18, I didn't take need any daily medication or medicine, excuse me, and now I take two prescriptions daily. I'm not sure if I'm getting surgery yet, pending another test. The pain is constant and affecting me in extreme ways, physically and mentally. My medical bills claims are totaling over $59,000 for treatment as of now. The bills I sent with the letter show that I am denied, being denied coverage from the insurance due to a third party at fault. I retained a lawyer soon after the injury and it would not be justice to allow a civil immunity motion for the defendants. I ask that you take all this into consideration and understand the situation. Now, he never said he didn't want jail time in the beginning. He never said, I just want money, which is what Mr. Maserani just said, oh, it's all about the money. This is a man who, from the start, when the detectives questioned him, he was in a lot of pain. He went to the hospital, he had scans done, he was still in pain. Um, he had five people kicking him and punching him while he was on the ground in a bar. So. Our position is he did suffer serious injuries. He may even need surgery. God knows how, how much his bills will be. So he has a right to bring a civil action to recoup whatever the restitution does not recoup. And he understands that any restitution will be subtracted from whatever civil judgments he gets. I've talked to him and he understands that and he's told his lawyer and I've spoken to his uh, lawyer just to tell them we're asking for a full amount of $15,000 restitution. So they understand that. They're not trying to get double um, the money, but he is entitled to restitution for losses and um, monetary bills that he's incurred because of the <coughs> defendant's action. So, um, and again, so nobody has handed me any money. Yeah. Speaking of restitution, um, the three thousand dollars that was part of the agreement, does that encompass the hundred twenty-five sixty-eight that VCCO is looking for? No. In fact, Judge, I didn't even see that. Okay. I didn't even realize that. I'm looking for a date on their letter. I don't know how that's going to work. And I do not know how that's going to work. I don't know if Your Honor, uh, they're asking for it. I guess I should ask for an additional on their behalf. Is it just that 168? 
125 I think you can write it in your discretion because he's... I can. Yeah. Right, but it's... Uh, but it's owed to the BCCO. So what's I probably going to have to happen is the victim will have to pay it out of his $15,000. This is what's going to happen if they paid him 125.68. That's what's going to oh. have to happen because I had another case like this. I thought that they were dividing the 125.68 by five. They can do that. Right. And so it's, we're talking about $25.13. Right. So I would ask, since it's such a minimal fee that you, Your Honor, ask that that additional $25.13 be paid to the BCCO on top of the $3,000. Thank you. Um, so Judge, again, there's a strong need to deter this kind of conduct. Um, the fact that he was 23 and young and his brain may have been formed is just another way of making an excuse and not taking responsibility. Thank you. Just may I, real quick. Real quick, uh, I, just, I was, I, I was just the citing the research that was done by scientists. I'm not, familiar with it. Not me. And, and I just want the record to reflect. I understand the counsel feels very strongly about this case, but I felt very strongly about not resolving this case. And I only agreed to resolve this case because the other attorneys and the other defendants really wanted to resolve this case. My client agreed to forfeit his job and not fight for it because for the greater good of everybody resolving their case. I just want, you know, I know counsel very, feels very strongly about certain things. I feel very strongly about other things as well. And, and it is what it is. We're here. We, we, we did it. Uh, and there's, there are going to be lasting effects. One thing I want to say about this, this statement, it is, it is intriguing to me, and I'm curious as to why doesn't this young man tell us what kind of work he does? I, I, that, that to me, when you're claiming serious neck and back injuries, I want to know what kind of work you do. You sit at a desk or you're a construction worker. There's nothing in here that tells me what he does. Well, I don't I'm, see I'm sure if your personal injury partner were to talk to you he could, and take a deposition, you'd get all those details. Right, but, but all I'm saying is, Judge, it, it would be something for me to argue about, depending, you know, because, again, I live with these cases we as well. Lost wages. Right, but uh, what I'm talking about is ability, like he's claiming that he needs surgery and he's getting epidural shots and that he's debilitated, but if he's lifting things and doing things that would undermine or he has that kind of a job that would undermine this statement and, and that will be left for the personal injury attorneys to sort out right but again and and the fact that he didn't mention lost wages uh, could mean a lot of different things it could mean that he has a desk job and he has a miswork could mean that he didn't think of it because he's not being coached by his attorney there's a lot of things it was happen. indicated i think by counsel that he works two jobs so I don't know what those jobs right, are. And I, I explained to him that we would not be asking for any type of lost wages for restitution, which is probably why he didn't mention it in his letter. I didn't think we could ask for restitution for that. I was focused on the medical bill. So maybe that's my fault. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you. Mr. Jones, is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, this this whole situation has been uh, very unfortunate <coughs> and uh, it's changed my life forever um, if I could go back and fix one thing in my life it would be that night and uh, I'm just I'm very sorry for what happened and you're in the unfortunate position of having a job where you should have been diffusing the situation instead of adding to it is that true Yes. Now, I, I know your attorney mentioned that you went to rehab for alcohol issues. Did you have an alcohol issue before that? I did. Okay. Uh, because, I don't know, when, when Mr. Masrani mentioned uh, the, the uh, victim being coached by his personal injury attorney, I was wondering if you're going to rehab was something that you were also coached to do or something that you, you really took ownership of and responsibility for a problem that you had. Unfortunately, this event is what opened my eyes to my problem. And are you working now? Yes, I am. Where do you work? I drive a truck in uh, for a produce company in Clifton. And, um, and the reason I ask is I don't have a full pre-sentence report because it was sort of a person's plea, uh, so we don't get all the, the great detail that we get about someone's life. 
and um, so you live, do you live by yourself? Where do you live? I live with my parents. Okay. Um, and um, you pay rent there? I do. And um, what are your future career plans? Um, as of right now, it's kind of all up in the air. Um, I'm just going to do whatever whatever I could do to support myself and 100% support my son. How old is your son? My son will be three in March. All right. Does he live with you? I have him three days a week. And you pay child support? I do. You know, the finances matter. What do you earn um, at your job? I make uh, $20 an hour. And how, how many hours you put in? At least 50 a week. And what's your rent? I pay my parents 500 bucks a month. Right. Anything else that you want to say? Just that I'm very sorry for the whole, the whole incident. This indictment arose after a fight at the Golden Rail Pub in New Brunswick on January 27th of 2018. Mr. Jones was involved in the fight along with four friends, and the fight did appear to erupt, as uh, indicated by the assistant prosecutor, after the victim was dancing with a female, and then several members of the group uh, inserted themselves into that uh, uh, situation, and uh, the physical fighting began, as also indicated by our assistant prosecutor. Uh, Mr. Jones apparently held the victim while he was being uh, punched in the face by another <coughs> one of the co-defendants. And um, the defendant, I'm sorry, the victim appeared to suffer some significant injuries. According to the statements that I read, he indicates that he suffers from memory loss, uh, headaches, back pain uh, from four herniated discs, and he's had substantial treatments and medical bills and lost, lost income I did read that in one of his statements, along with residual uh, suffering from the beating that was inflicted by this group of individuals. Uh, he has ongoing treatment and now is reporting that he may be going for surgery, and he is in the process of a civil lawsuit against the defendants and the, uh, the bar. And Mr. Jones did plead guilty to an amended count of, for simple assault as a disorderly person's offense. According to the pre-sentence report, uh, Mr. Jones is 23 years of age, you're about to turn 24 in a couple of weeks, right? Yes. And uh, this is his first superior court convictions. He's had no municipal matters. He's had no, no juvenile matters. Uh, he was a police officer in the city of New Brunswick, and he was off duty at the time of this incident, but the incident did occur within his jurisdiction in New Brunswick. I do find that aggravating factor nine applies. Uh, there is a very strong need to deter you and others from violating the law or from attacking someone who basically was defenseless. I actually thought about applying uh, the um, aggravating factor two, which I'm not going to, but I thought about it because uh, when, five, when it's a five on one situation um, and the victim is being held down while other people punch him or being kicked while he's on the ground, that is a vulnerable individual. Um, but uh, I don't have do have some of the medical bills. I don't have a lot of the medical reports to show me that the gravity of the harm was, was uh, extraordinary. Uh, so I'm, I'm not finding that, but I will tell you I thought about it. I do find mitigating factor six applies because of your willingness to compensate the victim, uh, not only the 3,000 that was initially agreed to, but the additional 2513 that we talked about earlier. You also get the benefit of mitigating factor seven because you have no criminal record. Um, I will give you the benefit of mitigating factors eight and nine because I, I think that as a result of the, the devastating career loss that you've gone through here, uh, which is appropriate under the circumstances, uh, the, the lesson learned hopefully will be taken home and uh, this type of thing will not happen in the future. Um, the fact that you were a police officer shows that you had some very positive uh, aspects of your personality. Again, I don't have a full sentencing report um, to know that, but I also, from your comments, know that you have your, your son three days a week, uh, you live with your parents and you, and you pay rent to them. 
So there's there's clearly some uh, indicia of responsibility uh, that you that you have in your character, uh, despite uh, your young age. Uh, I will also give you the benefit of mitigating factor 10. I think you would be successful on probation because uh, you did take the bull by the horns and go down and have uh, rehabilitation uh, for what you acknowledge that was an alcohol problem. So overall, the mitigating factors do outweigh the aggravating factors, and this was a negotiated plea that the court is willing to accept. Uh, I am going to sentence you to one year of probation. I know your request was no probation. However, um, in light of the acknowledged issue with alcohol, uh, there's a concern that the court has uh, that that needs to be monitored uh, through probation. And uh, the restitution is 3000 to the victim plus $25.13 to VCCO. Uh, your uh, employment with the city of New Brunswick as a police officer is forfeited, but that is as to New Brunswick only. Um, I agree with your attorney's comment that it's probably unlikely that you'll be able to get another police job, but the good news is is that you have fallen on your feet and have been able to uh, get the uh, job that you have which is $20 an hour, uh, which is a, a, a reasonable rate of pay for someone. I don't know how it compares to your police salary. I'm sure it's probably less um, and benefits and all of that. Uh, but there are consequences, and uh, they're serious uh, in light of the circumstances here. You do have one day of jail credit. That only applies if you violate the conditions of probation. <coughs> and the conditions of probation are going to include um, that, I mean, I don't know if you've done it already, because I know you've gone to alcohol rehab, but you have to complete an anger management counseling program. Has that been done already? No. Okay, you'll have to complete an anger management pro program that is approved by your probation officer. You will have to uh, maintain employment, remain offense-free, and report to probation as directed. You also have to have no victim contact uh, with the victim in this case, with the exception, of course, of court proceedings, which I understand may be ongoing in the civil realm. Which, uh, before I turn to the civil issue, uh, there's a BCC penalty of $50 for the state and neighborhood's assessment of 75 and the probation fee is going to be $5 per month for the time that you are on probation. And I might have made it higher, but I want you to be able to pay the child support for your child and uh, and also to be able to uh, cover the restitution, which was probably a large chunk out of your, out of your savings if you had it or, uh, that you've accumulated between plea time and now. With regard to the civil reservation, um, as cited by the attorney, there has to be good cause uh, where there, it would wreak financial, devastating financial havoc on your uh, circumstances. And I know the state has not weighed in in terms of objecting to the civil reservation request, but the victim has. And um, uh, the fact is, we know that the deeper pockets here may be the one that ultimately is responsible. Uh, but the fact that you now have a, a, a well-paying job, um, I'm not finding that there is a devastating financial impact. So I'm not going to grant the civil reservation. And. Uh, my understanding is that count two would be dismissed? Yes, Judge, count two is dismissed. All right, and uh, you do have a right to appeal your conviction and sentence. You would have 45 days from today to file a notice of appeal. Uh, just to add to my findings on that, I just want to say victim's rights matter, and, um, and the victim's right to be fully compensated for his losses exists. Um, <coughs> you know, to the extent that there's any commercial credit that needs to be worked out for the 3,025.13 that you're going to be paying in restitution here, we'll leave that to the civil attorneys to deal with. Uh, but victims' rights are very important uh, to the court to and to our society, and um, so that is why another reason why I'm not granting the reservation. As I was saying, you have a right to appeal your conviction and sentence. You would have 45 days from today to file a notice of appeal. If you miss that deadline, you can ask for another 30 days if you show good cause. If you miss that deadline, you could lose that right. If you cannot afford an attorney for an appeal, you can apply to the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. You also have five years from today to file a petition for post-conviction relief. And if you miss that deadline, you could lose your right to file for post-conviction relief. You understand your rights regarding appeal and post-conviction relief? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and I, I did want to uh, also mention that the reason I didn't do fines only, another reason is uh, that if I did that and granted the civil reservation, this would really be uh, almost buying your way out of a, a, an offense that, and, and it in, the, in light of mysterious injuries to this victim, I simply don't think that's fair to the victim. 
and uh, so there has to be more of a consequence uh, than the slap on the wrist of a fine. Thank but, you. But Judge, you, you did neither. You, you, you did neither. You, you didn't. You, you imposed probation. Of probation that he didn't want. Right, and then and then you you didn't give us the civil reservation that we want, uh, which is, I, I'm, I'm I, I, you, you know, certain certain findings you made about what happened during the fight. I didn't really want to address that too much, but I, I have to state for the record, Judge. M the the this victim was not punched while Mr. Jones was holding him. In fact, the whole thing started with Mr. Jones holding him back from the other people that were coming around him. Then he went to the ground and he was kicked on the ground. I just want the record to reflect that. So I, I don't, I don't. Being kicked while he's on the ground after being held, it, 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 the whole scene was a bad scene. It was a tragic night for everyone involved, the victim and and the defendants. I, I understand that, Judge, but you know. Thank you. Thank you.